Hey guys, it's Techie Tish here and welcome back to another video. This video is going to be all about the different types of questions I got asked in my interviews before I landed my role and the answers that either I gave or I received from the interviewer. Before we get into the questions and answers, you're going to have to anticipate that there is going to be, I would say, two types of scenarios. You're going to have one scenario where the interview is going to be discussion led and you know where you sort of it's sort of more informal and then the other scenario is going to be where the interview is going to have that set of questions and answers and and what they're looking for it is like straight to a T. I had three interviews with three different organizations and I'd say they were all quite similar in terms of scenario based. I'd say they were more discussion led and this goes right from the first interview that you might have with the recruiter or HR all the way to the final interview. Um, I found that the final interview was definitely a lot more formal, should I say, but it was still a, you know, it was still discussion based, which, which I prefer because it means that you're having a discussion rather than feeling like, oh, I, I, you know, I need to answer it in this particular way or, you know, there's no really way with getting answers right or wrong kind of thing. So with that said, let's get straight into the questions and answers. The first common, most common question is tell me about yourself. And usually how I answer this is I will discuss what I've been doing over the past I'd say six to 12 months. So at that time when I had my interviews, I was currently employed as a second line IT support analyst. So I was doing second line IT support with customers and, you know, fixing equipment here and there and also doing a few system admin type of jobs so that was what I was doing professionally and then in my own time I was picking up DevOps tools and also doing Udemy courses and you can check out my other video which is linked down in the description below and those were the that's the gist of what I was doing at that time so if you are doing anything outside of work that plays into junior dev that plays into DevOps, speak about that. And, um, you know, just in summary, tell them what you've been doing over the six, the past six months to 12 months, uh, what you're currently doing in your job role. Is there anything you're currently doing in your job role that's DevOps related as well? Um, or is it just things you're doing in your own time? But that's a good opportunity to start off the interview by saying what things you're working on. So do that and I guarantee you you will start off the interview very well. So the next question that you probably could get asked early on is what tools are you familiar with? And when I say tools, I mean DevOps related tools. So have you used Docker? Have you used Kubernetes? Have you used Terraform? Have you used Ansible? What tools have you used to maintain um, a project? Uh, what tools have you used to containerize a project? What tools have you used to deploy infrastructure as code? Those are the things that, that they're probably going to be looking for. I'd say pick one tool from each area. So pick a tool for containerization, pick a tool for deployed infrastructure as code, pick a tool for maintenance, pick pick just one of the tools out of those areas and start to learn that and explain that you're, you're learning these tools and you want to dive deeper into it and actually work within those tools in a professional standard so that you could take your further you, you could take your knowledge further and that will show again that you've got that interest and passion because that's what they're looking for they're looking for that you've got that motivation but what languages are you familiar with and i suspect this question would come up because they're going to ask you if you actually even have any interest in programming or if you have dealt with any programming languages before now because I've done a computer science degree I've touched on 
C, C++, C Sharp, Python, a bit of HTML5, CSS and all that kind of stuff. So I had dabbled in programming languages for my degree. However, outside of that, I didn't really, after my degree, I didn't actually do much with those languages. Didn't really know that I wanted to go into DevOps at that time. So I'd just continued working on Python because that's the language I got on bell with. I understood it quite quickly and I decided to challenge myself and build some applications. And there's there's a link in the description where you can follow Udemy course where you can build 10 real world applications in Python. And if you do that, it, it will take you through the fundamentals and then you'll be the applications. You it's a it's a wide variety of applications, so that that'll be good. And even if you just do one or two out of the ten, you stick that in your your um, repository, whether it's GitHub or, or, or whatever. You can actually show that, or you can even better yet put that down as a project on your CV and say, "Oh, I've built this." And when it comes to interview, you can talk about that project. You can talk about with what you found difficult, what you found challenging, what you enjoyed. And to take it even further, what you could do, which is what I'm challenging myself, is when I've built an app, I then want to take it one step further and implement automation into getting that app deployed. That's where you're gonna look at the DevOps tools that you would need to deploy an app and use automation if for whatever reason you haven't t like picked up a language i just recommend go now go on udemy and learn python um and learn how to just build some basics not basic apps but just learn how to use the the language the next most common question is why do you want the job role now this is a question that you're gonna get regardless whether it's the first time they're asking you or the third time they're asking you. The best way you can answer this is to say that you are you love a challenge, you love working in a team, you love collaborating, you love you love the idea of automating things, you like to make processes quicker things like that you want to basically list out what it sort of means and what a DevOps engineer actually does but say that these are the things you are interested in so and also just think of DevOps as a tool and not really a job we are basically people that automate things and use tools to make processes quicker and we do that by following tooling and processes that is all about that's all in that devops process so think of devops as a tool and a process rather than the job title and that'll help you understand it a bit more the next type of questions that you'll get after sort of the most common ones are done and dusted is scenario based questions and these are questions where you're you have to envision yourself in a situation and describe how you've dealt with that that situation essentially the question that i got was tell me about the time you delivered on a project and in this you want to you don't like none of my examples right were really devops related and that is for fact it's not about always referring to the job that you're applying for. It's about how you actually answer the question. So don't try and think of every question, every answer that it has to relate back to the role. Unless you was applying for a senior position, it doesn't really matter too much at this stage, especially at a junior. Well, I thought of a situation and I used the STAR technique to explain that situation and i did that for pretty much all of the scenario based and 
any other sort of questions that came up as well. So the example that I gave was that in my previous employment, I was co-lead on a handover project between my team which was second line and a third line team which was the networks team and essentially they were handing over the wireless infrastructure to my team so that meant we would be the team that would deal with any issues or any maintenance of the wireless technologies and i just basically explained how we went about that and how I led on that and how we delivered in the end. The next question is, tell me about a time where you dealt with a difficult customer, person, team, a colleague, um, you know, that kind of thing. And it's always going to be some, something along those lines. So really just think about a time where you did generally have a difficult situation, you know, maybe you delivered on something but you got negative feedback um, from a customer or you know one of those things and the type of example I gave in in this was that um, in one of my previous employments there was a customer who rang up to say that the internet was down for their business and you know I proceeded to ask them questions and I noted down all these questions in a ticket I raised it with our third party suppliers and we, you know, we went and done all the technical um, troubleshooting that we needed to do and we did go back to the customer and it, it turned out that from what the third party suppliers had looked at, there was nothing really wrong. So the customer then gave us negative feedback and the best way I dealt with that was I informed the customer that I would escalate even further and we would do some further investigations because it did look down from our end but from the suppliers end it didn't so there must have been something else going on maybe locally to the business so we did some further investigation and it turned out that there was a um, like a network outage in the nearby area which was affecting that business um, even though it was nothing to do with the third party supplier so after that um, the customer actually just thanked me for you know doing that extra research so that that's the type of example I gave and also it shows that I didn't just go back to the customer and say okay yes yeah, it's, it's, it's it's, it's down there's nothing we can do see you tomorrow like you know take that initiative that you you know and as an IT person you do want you should have that instilled in you that you want to fix something sometimes it's not for you to fix and that's fine but as long as you can keep your customers happy that that's really the main thing there's other questions that could come up and I have one example and that's sort of what do you do in your spare time now some people think that this question is so irrelevant or like why is it asked and honestly it's usually just so that the interviewer can see what you do in your spare time or like sort of like what what things that interest you now pe some people might give you advice oh keep those interests in relation to the job um, that you're playing for and some will say oh just give like I don't know you you play video games or something like as an example now for me I'd say a bit of both is always the best so I don't know if you can tell by my jerseys I am a, I love ice hockey that was something that I talked about and it turns out that my current manager he actually coaches an ice hockey team so that was something that we could bond over in that in that interview mentioned about some of the things that I was doing DevOps wise in my own time that I, that I may have mentioned at the beginning but you kind of want to just you know throw it in again because this question is usually asked at the end the last question you're going to get is do you have any questions for us I would say this is where a lot of people a lot of people come back to me and say oh you asked some great questions so the questions that I asked were what was your biggest challenge during COVID-19 and how did the company handle that? 
Um, I asked what type of things would I be doing day to day? Um, will I get enough support from senior colleagues? What tooling they might use? If you're not aware like, of at that stage, um, that's a good opportunity to ask. Um, is there flexibility with home um, working and working in the office? Those are sort of really the main questions you want to ask because first it shows that you can actually gain a little bit of insight into the company like how did they actually handle COVID? Was it a strain? If it was, how did they come back from that? Um, and also the questions about the job duties and what you're kind of going to be doing that shows that you actually are interested in what you would actually be doing like that sort of day to day so those are the questions and answers if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because 80 percent of you that watch my videos are not subscribed so please subscribe that'll help us a lot 